Okay, so now that you guys have watched the distance and midpoint um, video, we are going to go over some examples of using those equations that you learned in the midpoint video. So first off, we're going to use a number line, and we are going to have points Q and R on. So we have point Q right here, and we have point R right there. R is at negative 3, and Q is at negative 6. So this is probably a pretty easy example. You guys have probably know already how to solve it, but let's do it how we learned in the formula. So we're gonna make QX1 and we're gonna make RX2. So using our midpoint formula, QR, so line segment QR equals the absolute value of X1 minus X2. So now let's plug it in. So X1 we see is negative six minus x2 is negative 3. When we have two negatives like this, we change them both to positive. It's a two-stick theorem like you guys probably have heard um, from Ms. Cook. So we have negative 6 plus 3, which equals then negative 3. Now what's the absolute value of negative 3? Absolute values change it to positive. So three is our answer, and the line segment QR, the distance of QR, is three. So this is, is this is example one. Let's move on to example two. We're going to find the distance on a coordinate plane. So we know E is a ordered pair negative four, one, while F is the ordered pair three, negative one. If it helps, we can graph this really fast. So we have one, two, three, four, negative four, up one. So here is where E is, negative four, one. And then F is at one, two, three, and it's down one. So it's right here. This is where F is, up three, negative one. So we're trying to find the distance of E to F. So trying to find this line segment E Now you guys don't necessarily have to um, write this out if you don't want. We basically just have to write, okay, we're going to make E, we're going to make E x1, y1. So E equals E, and E equals negative 4, 1. And then we're going to make F equal x2, y2, which is equal to F, which is equal to 3, negative one. The reason I write it like this is because we are going to use our distance formula. So we write E F. We're first going to write what that distance formula is. We get the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's our formula. So now we just need to plug and chug. So what is x2? x2, we look up here, x2, x2, x2 is 3, 3 minus x1, negative 4 squared plus y2, negative 1 minus y1, 1 squared. Okay, we do the two stick, two negatives equals one positive, so we get the square root as 3 plus 4 squared plus, we can do 2 stick here, um, negative 1 plus negative 1 squared. Okay, what's 3 plus 4? We have to do PEMDAS. 3 plus 4 is 7 squared plus, what's negative 1 plus negative 1? A uh, handy dandy negative 2 squared. So what do we get? We get 7 squared, which is 49. Plus, what's negative 2 squared? It's not negative 4, it is 4. Yes, 4. Whenever you square it, it turns positive. 2 times 2 negatives is a positive. What's 49 plus 4? 53. You can leave it like that as 53. Otherwise, if you guys do want to know, it is approximately 7 point eight. Either of these answers work. Okay, 
Now we're on to the midpoint formula. So our first one is going to be find the coordinates of M, the midpoint of G and H. So we're trying to find that. We have the segment G and H, and we're trying to find, find M, which is the midpoint. Okay? Okay. We know G is located at 8, negative 6, and H is located at negative 14 plus or comma 12. I'm not going to draw this out, but you guys are welcome to draw this out if a picture helps you. Uh, I'm just going to do it as our equations say. So I'm going to label G as X1, Y1. Remember, you have to have an X and a Y when you do an ordered pair. And I'm going to do H as X2 because it's our second one, and Y2. So does anyone remember what our midpoint formula is? midpoint formula, I'm going to write it up here, so M equals, big parentheses, X1 plus X2 divided by 2, comma, we're looking for an ordered pair for the midpoint, so that's why you have the comma, Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. Okay, so now I have to plug and chug. So x1, what's x1? x1's up here, so we have an 8 plus, what's x2? We have x2 down here, so that's a negative 14 divided by 2, comma. What's y1? Well, you get y1 up here as a negative 6 plus, what's y2? We get y2 down there, it's a 12 all over 2. Keep that in our order of pair parentheses. So we get 8 plus negative 14, which is a negative 6 over 2, comma. And then we get a negative 6 plus 12, which is a positive 6 over 2. Does 6 go into 2? Yes, it does. So we get M equals, this is our midpoint, equals the order of here, negative 3, 3. If you draw it out, you can probably see that a little better as well. Okay, we are going to do another one. We are going to find the measure of PR if Q is a midpoint of PR. So find the measure of PR if Q of PR. Okay, so we have our line here, and we have a point here that's P, and we have a point here that's Q, and we have a point here that's R. Okay, this whole thing, the whole thing is 14x plus 2, and then this little section QR, this section right there, is 6 minus 3x. Okay, so how are we going to figure this out? There's a couple different ways that you guys can figure it out. Well, since this is the midpoint, remember the definition of midpoint is that it is halfway in between this whole segment. So if it's halfway in between this whole segment, we get QR, we know QR, guess what we also know? They're congruent, right? So what does congruency mean? That you can take this and it's the same exact measure over here. So we get six minus three X. So this is six minus, six minus three X as well by the um, between this and the midpoint and all of those different things that we've learned so far. So how are we gonna figure this out? We have a part plus a part equals a whole. If you guys remember the between this formula yesterday. So we have one part. So we have PQ, a part, plus a part QR equals a whole. P 
R. So we have PQ, which is 6 minus 3X, which we figured out, plus QR, which is another 6 minus 3X, equals PR, which we were given 14X plus 2. Now we just have to solve. We combine like terms, so we get, so we see that we have a 3X and a 3X, so we're going to combine those. And that's be going to become a negative 6x because we have a negative and a negative. Um, so we have, and then I see that we have a 6 and a 6. We're adding those 6s. So we get 6 plus 6 is 12. Those are like terms. So 12 minus 6x equals r 14x plus 2. Guess what? We're going to solve this like you've solved every other equation before. Subtract 12 from both sides. So you get negative 6x equals 2, 14x. Uh, so we subtract 12. So 12 minus 12, negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10 plus 14x. We bring that 14 on over, so we add 14, we subtract 14x on both sides, subtract 14x, subtract 14x, and we get negative 20x equals negative 10. How do we solve that? Divide it by negative 20. So then we get x equals negative 10 over negative 20. That crosses off. We have two negatives and we're dividing, so that two stick becomes a positive. So x equals one half. Now are we done? No, because we need to find the measure of PR. We found the measure of x. So now we have to find the measure of PR. PR is this whole thing. So we have to find the measure of PR by plugging in. So we get 14x plus 2, and we have to plug in x, we know x, so 14 times 1 half plus 2. So 14, half of 14 is 7 plus 2. So PR equals 9, and x equals 1 half. Does that all make sense? If you have any questions, feel free to come visit me before or after school. Um, otherwise, ask in your group. Hopefully that helps.